Hello and welcome to the first in a series of CalTOPO tutorial videos. In this first video, we're going to go over signing in, membership, accessing support sites, creating a map, and configuring a map. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and type in caltopo.com into my internet browser. And that should bring me to this overview map here of the United States. So to start with, I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account, or if you are a first-time CalTOPO user, just sign in with an email of your choice and that will automatically create an account for you. So you can see over here on the left hand side that I have the option to sign in with Google, with Facebook, Microsoft, or Yahoo. So I'll go ahead and get signed in. And once I sign in, that'll bring me right back to this page. So once I'm signed in, if I want to access my account, all I have to do is go up here to the left hand and click on my email, and that'll bring up this pop-up window. And you can see here that I have several tabs that I can toggle through titled your account, your maps, bookmarks, PDFs, or layers. So if I click on my account, you can see here this is where I have the option to log out. This is also where I have the option to upgrade. So under subscription, you can see right now that I have a free account. And if I hit upgrade, that will bring me to this window where I have the option to upgrade, as well as this will show you the different features that the current level that I have, the free level, as well as the different levels allow. I can also click on your maps and view any maps that I've saved to my account. And you can see that I'm using one out of five non-public maps. So on the free version, you can save up to five private maps to your account and an unlimited amount of public maps to your account. Bookmarks are any maps that I've bookmarked, any PDFs I've saved to my account, or any layers I've saved to my account. We'll go ahead and briefly touch on some support options. So if I go up here to the top left-hand corner and hover over the CalTOPO icon, you can see I have some direct hyperlinks to the knowledge base, the CalTOPO blog, a guided tour of the site, or access to the support forum. So now that I'm signed in, let's go ahead and create a map. To create a map, we're going to start by going to the, the location that I want my map of. So I can either go to my current location using this target icon here, or I can enter in something in the search bar. And I can enter in anything from a address or town name, such as I would in Google Maps, to different coordinate system from lat long or UTMs. So I'll go ahead and type in Truckee, California. Hit go and that'll bring me to Truckee, California. Another neat feature that I have is the option to search near something. So for example, say that I wanted to find Castle Peak near Truckee, California, and there's tons of Castle Peaks all over the place, but all I have to do is type in Castle Peak near Truckee, California. Hit go, and that'll bring me to the nearest Castle Peak. So at this point, I have my location, and I can share this with somebody by simply copying and pasting this URL into an email or something like that and sending them. So you'll see if I open a new tab, copy and paste that email, that'll bring me right to this spot. Now, if I want to create a map that I want to save to my account, all I have to do then is add an object. So I'll go to add new object and add a marker, and we'll go over this in more detail in a later video, but I can drag my marker down to where I want it to be. I'll label it as car. I can add some comments. I can change specific coordinates. I can toggle whatever folder I want it in. I can change the style. So for this, I'll change it to a car. Hit OK, and once I add an object, you can see that now I have the opportunity to save my map. So I'll go ahead and click on one of these two icons for saving my map. And now I have a different name I can choose. So for example, I'll call this Castle Peak Hike. And I want to save it to my account, so I'll keep that box checked. Um, this map, I can change it from completely private to viewable with a URL to publicly viewable. I can also enter in an optional password to give other users access. So for example, if I wanted to send this to some friends of mine that I was going on the trip with, I could type in a quick password and then send them the URL as well as the password. So once I hit save, my map will be saved. And now you can see up here that the URL has changed. So if I copy and paste this URL into an email or into another browser, hit enter, that'll bring me back to this map with the icon that I've added there. 
Now, if I want to configure this map to begin editing it and adding different objects, I can do so up here under this configurations icon. Um, the display labels, I can change from showing all of them to none to by folder. And I can also toggle from a clear background to a white background. So if you look down at the car icon, when I click on this box, you'll watch that it changes from, from no background to a white background. I can set the visibility by item or by folder. I can show a UTM or USNG grid, and I can change the intensity on that using the slide bar right here. Um, I can change my coordinate system from WGS84 to NAD27 if I'd like. I can also change my units for mixed, metric, imperial, nautical, feet, acres, so on and such forth. And the coordinate system here is going to be referring to the coordinates that you see in that white box on the upper right hand corner. So my primary is what's showing up top. So if I wanted to change that, for example, to UTM, I could click on that. And then if I wanted to change my secondary to degrees, minutes, seconds, I can click on that. And you'll see that the coordinate system changes there. Showing my position at the cursor or at the center of my map, I'm going to keep it on cursor. And you can see here that when I move my cursor around, those coordinates change. Drawing, it's best to keep at 1,000 vertices, and Snap2 will be touched on in a later video. Now if I want to go ahead and measure something, say a point, I want to measure the position and elevation, I'm going to go to Measure, Position and Elevation, and then simply click for the point info, and you can see here that this pulls up the elevation, slope, aspect, as well as the coordinates in several different coordinate systems. If I wanted to measure the sun exposure of a certain area, I'll click on sun exposure, click on a specific spot, and a pop-up box will appear and it'll calculate my sun exposure. You can see here that the gray is going to represent night, the blue is going to be in the shade, and the yellow is sunlight. And you'll see that if I move my cursor, it changes the date as well as the time of day. If I want a NOAA forecast of the area, I'll click on that and then click on the area that I want and this will redirect me to the NOAA website. If I want a simulated view, I'm simply going to click on the area that I want to be looking from, and this will bring up this tab that gives you a simulated view from the area that you clicked on. So you can see here that if I move using my cursor, I can see all these different peak names as well as what it looks like. If I go to the left-hand side, I have everything organized in alphabetical order. I can also change from wireframe to imagery, for example. And right now this is showing that I'm 100 feet up, but I could change that to higher or lower up as needed. And then when I move the screen, you can see here that on the bottom right hand corner, the area that's inside of these two red lines is showing where I'm looking at right now on the map. If I wanted to measure a distance from point A to point B, I'll go here to measure distance and I will click to start a line and I will double click to end my line and this will bring up measuring in distance. And remember, if you want to change that from meters and feet to something else, simply go to configuration and then you can change your units here to whatever you want. If I want to take a bearing, I'll simply do the same thing as I did before. I will click to start a point and double click to end my bearing and you'll you see here that it'll tell me what my bearing is in true and magnetic. If I want a profile of a certain area, I'm simply going to click, click, and I can either add as many points as I want or end my line. And this will bring up the profile. And if you see here, when I move my cursor in the bottom box, uh, the small black dot on the map will move along the line showing me where I am exactly. If I want to take terrain statistics of an area, same thing, I'm going to click, double click to end, and this will bring up a box with terrain statistics. If I want to measure the area of a polygon, similar to measuring just from point A to point B, except this time I'm going to draw a polygon of some sort, and then I will end my line on top of where I started, and this will give me the kilometers squared and acreage of that polygon. If I wanted to take terrain statistics of a polygon, same thing simply just going to draw my polygon and then double click where I ended it and this will calculate the terrain statistics for that area.
So that about wraps up our first video there, and there will be more coming soon with more information. Thanks for watching.